All right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at the Dofer A135. Last time we were talking basics on this module, and this time I thought it would be useful to maybe get an idea visually on an oscilloscope what exactly this module is doing. Uh, now, we have covered VCAs in the past. I uh, did a series quite a while back on the A131. Um, but at the time, I did not have an oscilloscope integrated into my demonstration sort of setup. So I thought it would be useful to kind of see what exactly a VCA is doing to our signals. Um, originally, I thought I was going to do kind of DC signals and AC signals. Uh, but for the most part, the behavior is going to be the same and the visuals are going to be sort of uh, the same as well. Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump right in and see what I'm talking about. Um, so we're going to be setting up a patch of audio going into our A135 up here. Um, so I'm going to be getting some waveforms uh, down from my A111. I'm going to be starting out with a pulse wave coming from the A111 right here. And I'm going to take that up into my A135 in input number three. Now I'm only using these because they're closer to my oscilloscope. There's no uh, special purpose behind this other than for demonstration. Uh, I'm going to be taking a triangle wave from my A111 down here, patching out from there, and then going into the number four input up here at the top. There we go. And then I'm going to be taking the outputs of three and four into my oscilloscope. So I'm going to be taking the single outputs this time and there we go. And I'm going to take that and patch it over into my oscilloscope. So you should see a little visual appear here in a moment. Once I get my CVs in there, you can see it my oscilloscope, it's bare. But if I were to uh, bring up the gain, you would see my pulse wave. I'm going to bring the gain all the way down. But in a moment, you'll see that um, kind of moving up and down here in a moment. So let me get my number four patched out. There we go. And then get that patched into my oscilloscope. There we go. I think I had the gain set a little bit differently on that one. So just so we know which waveform is which, input three is the red one. And then input four is the green one. Okay. Now it's time to get our CV to uh, kind of adjust the levels of these two channels over here. So we're going to be taking a triangle wave from our A147 right here. And we're going to be patching this into the number four CV input right there. And you should see at the oscilloscope our triangle wave moving up and down. At least amplitude wise, I mean. So the amplitude goes up and then it goes back down. Okay? So the idea is going to be the same with our other waveform. I'm going to take the sine wave out from the same A147 and I'm going to take it over into input number three. There we go. Now we can kind of see them both going up and down at the same time. It's a little hard to interpret that because they're kind of happening at the same time. Uh, but what I did in my, um, in my sort of tests, and I'm going to do now so you can see them a little bit better, is I actually integrated the A183 into the patch. So I'm going to take the sine wave out from there, go into my input over here, and I have this module functioning as a polarizer, so it's, uh, it's adjusting the polarity of the sine wave. And I'm going to take the output of that and then go over into input number three. We should see something a little bit different. Now, the primary reason I'm doing this is so that we can visually see them both occurring but at different times. So since I shifted the polarity on my second CV, 
They actually seem to be occurring in the opposite direction, or actually are orally as well. So there you go. At this point now I could go in and sort of adjust the overall CV level, like if I didn't want as much CV to go to my VCA on channel 3, I could bring down the level right there. And it would only bring up the amplitude a little bit. You can barely see it jumping up a little bit right there. But if I want more of my CV to affect it, I can bring that level up. And same thing on channel 4. If I want to bring that down, I can bring this down. So my triangle wave does not get as loud. And then I can also combine other amplitude levels into this as well. So like I can bring up my gain there, so then it kind of functions as a drone, but then it does increase amplitude as well. Or I can just shift the frequency of my LFO to kind of slow the whole sequence down just a little bit. And so this is a nice kind of just bare bones kind of example that we have right here. Now if I wanted to, I could go in and kind of integrate uh, additional inputs up here. And in the next demonstration, we will actually do that. Um, in the next one, what I thought we'd talk about is the quadraphonic demonstration that I mentioned a couple videos back. Um, we're going to be doing kind of a quadraphonic setup. We're going to have four signals going into here and then going in or actually going out to uh, my audio card over here when we're recording them and then sort of shifting them within the stereo space so that you'll be able to get a good sort of oral presentation of how you can use this kind of in a creative way uh, within the stereo field at any rate. Um, for the most part, that's all I really wanted to demonstrate this time. Uh, just some basic waveform representations of how our VCA is affecting our signal and how external CVs will behave on the VCA in each channel. Since we didn't really get to see that when I did the original demonstrations quite a while back. So, at any rate, I hope you found this useful. It's kind of a bare bones example here. Uh, but for the most part, your visuals over here at the oscilloscope are going to remain pretty much consistent when you have low frequency signals in here. Um, I thought if we did low frequency signals, it wouldn't be really that exciting since you wouldn't really hear anything, but you would see stuff over here in the oscilloscope. Uh, so I kind of spared you from that. Uh, at any rate, I hope that uh, this was useful for you. You got something out of it. And I hope that you join us the next time around. Uh, for the next one where we're going to be doing some quadraphonic demonstrations. So keep on patching out there, and thanks for watching. <laughs>